Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how you can make dust covers for all of your machines in your craft room really inexpensively and without a lot of supplies. This video is part of a collaboration with Shannon Green and a bunch of other YouTubers and um, it's an inspiration blog hub so if you want to check out the links in the video description you can see where to go next and probably be introduced to some awesome new smaller YouTube channels that you probably weren't even aware of before so it'll be like a little treat for you. So these are easy to make. This was my prototype. This is the first one that I did and it's for my old Cricut machine and um, what I did here was I took a half yard of fabric, draped it over, uh, cut off the excess and just hemmed it on all four sides and then I took some stretchy sewing elastic and I just kind of I pulled it out tight and stretched and sewed a zigzag over it kind of going about six inches down at the end across the short end and then six inches on the long end again so it's basically like a big fitted sheet um, I'm not going to show you that tutorial because I just explained it right there and honestly if I was to do it again what I would do was I would just keep that casing the hem the hem that I sewed all the way around and I would just feed my elastic through there and tie it in a knot I think it would fit the machine a little bit better and be a little bit easier it would save you that process of holding and stretching and sewing on the elastic at the end so um, if you want to do that that's pretty easy that's all there is to it just to hem around the side slide an elastic and you'll be good to go um, and because I always keep my machines covered, they last me a long time. I've had that one for, I don't know, six, six or seven years, and it's still working. So when you're in your studio, you'll have dust, you'll have maybe cat or dog hair, glitter, embossing powder. My husband's workshop is on the other side of the basement, so I get dust that way. So I really want to make sure I protect my investment. And I just got myself a Scan and Cut tube machine. And um, I made this little cover for it, and I really liked this one better than that one because it was a little bit more fitted, and it actually took a lot less material. So what I did here, and you can use whatever scraps you have left over, or if you collect fat quarters, I love fat quarters because they're usually pretty inexpensive, and you know they're they're pretty, pretty little swatches of fabric. So a fat quarter, if you're not familiar with the sewing term, a fat quarter is a quarter yard of a fabric, but instead of it being long and skinny, they take a full yard, they cut it in half that way and they cut it in half that way so you get a, that a nice fat quarter instead of a long skinny quarter fabric yard so if you were getting if you brought a bolt of fabric up to the cutting counter and you asked for a quarter yard they're gonna cut um, it's about 10 inches off of um, that you know 36 inch piece well, 36 inches divided by four, that would be a quarter yard. Um, that's what you're gonna get, a long skinny piece. And a lot of times it's not as useful when you're crafting. So just keep that in mind when you're, um, when you're purchasing fabric for projects. So what I did was, since I have quite a few fat quarters, I like them, they're kind of like little bits of candy and I always find them for 75 cents at Martin's. Um, so basically I took a fat quarter and I placed it over my machine and it worked out perfect for the skin and cut. You might need a little bit of a bigger piece or you can always sew on like a strip of fabric onto the bottom and make it really scrappy looking and cool to get that size. So this works out pretty good. You just want to make sure it's, it can overhang like maybe an inch up to an inch on each side. You don't want to make it too tight. You don't want this to like pinch anything in your machine. It's better to have it a little looser than a little tight. Then what you want to do is measure the edge of your machine. This is the same process, whether you're making a sewing machine cover, a cover for your mink machine, your laminator, whatever mechanical machine you want to cover, it's the same process. So then you want to measure this, and this was six by six. So what I did was I took my contrasting fabric and I cut it seven by seven, and um, that, and I needed two of these pieces and one of these pieces, and then I will show you how I sewed it together at the sewing machine. It's really easy, and you know what? If you don't have a sewing machine, I honestly think you could do like a hem tape and get the same effect because these shouldn't need to be washed. They're just keeping dust off your machines. I really don't think they're going to get that dirty. There shouldn't be any instance where you're going to spill ink on top of your covered machines, I hope. Um, so, you know, hem tape might not go through the wash. I think you could probably even use a fabric glue if you don't have a sewing machine. But the assembly will be the same. And for that, we're going to go over to the table and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, we're at the machine and I had this scrap of fabric left over from my Cricut cover. So I'm just sewing it right on top of my fat quarter that's going to be the top cover area of my scanning cut cover and I'm just using a zigzag stitch to lock this down so you could totally decorate that um, fat quarter you're using for the center piece you don't have to but I wanted to show you this part just so you didn't wonder where that fabric in the middle of my machine came from 
Now I'm cutting the end pieces for my machine cover. This is the uh, part that I measured that was six by six. So I'm cutting my fabric seven by seven and I have um, my fabric stacked right on top of each other. So I'll get two pieces at once. And it's just a little quick tip to help you cut things evenly and at the same time. I'm using a rotary cutter and a mat, but if you have scissors that will work just fine. Make sure you press your fabric before you begin. It will really make it easier to cut and sew together. That's a skip I sometimes step and I always regret it whenever I skip that step. So now I need to make this find the center point of my um, part that's gonna go over the top of the machine as well as the parts that are gonna be at the end of my, sh my machine. So to do that, I simply fold my fabric in half. And I make a note of where that half point is. I just set my rotary cutter on there so I would see. And now I'm folding the end piece in half and I'm gonna line it up. Just place the folded fabric right side down on the main fabric so that the folded edge is right at that center point of the fabric. So when you open it up, you'll be having right sides together and you can sew them right sides together. And then just pin that piece of fabric down and repeat on the other side. Now we can head on over to the sewing machine and stitch those two pieces of fabric together. I have set my stitch width to a straight stitch and um, I'm not using too tight of a stitch. I think I'm doing about eight stitches per inch. Um, this isn't gonna take a ton of wear and tear, but I do recommend that you backstitch at the beginning and the end of this seam, just because the way we're going to put in our corners, our stitches aren't gonna overlap. So we wanna make sure that we have a durable seam there, even though it's not gonna take a lot of wear and tear. Then simply repeat that same step on the other side of your cover. Now it's time to sew the corners. So to do that, we're simply gonna fold right sides together. So we have that flap that we just sewed on there and we're folding it against the body of our machine cover. And then we're just gonna take it to the machine and sew a seam right up to the corner. Remember to backstitch at the front and the end of this seam. Okay, I'm gonna turn it out for you right here so you can see how neat and tidy that little corner is. So you just need to repeat that step three more times until all of your corners are sewn together. Now that your corners are sewn, simply fold over the raw edges and do a quick hem all the way around the open end of your cover and you'll be set to embellish it. I decided to use some of this pretty crocheted trim on my case and I've wanted to use this for a long time. It didn't have quite the right project and I'm using this simple hot glue to attach it down and I'm putting the glue right on top of the edge of that fabric that I had sewn down. This will just make sure it doesn't fray and I'm not planning on washing this so the hot glue is gonna be just fine. If you were using a thin ribbon, you could have sewn this right on at the beginning before you did any hemming, but I'm just gonna glue it down and then trim it and I'm gonna be all set to put it on my machine. Okay, this cover is so easy to put on your machine. I can do it with one hand while I'm holding, holding the video camera. How cool is that? See, so you're never too busy to cover up your machines properly so they last you a long time. I'm really happy with the way this cover turned out. I hope you try it. It's the same idea no matter what you wanna cover in your craft room. Just measure, cut, sew, and you are good. And there's a look at the one I showed you at the beginning of the video. I didn't like it as much, but you know what? It's still gonna keep dust off that machine and it's gonna make it last for me for more years to come. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please check out the links in the video description to the other friends that are hopping in this inspiration blog hop. You might find somebody new to follow. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. And until next time, happy crafting.